Yellowstone supervolcano, magnitude 7.0 earthquake. How another 7.0 earthquake rocked Yellowstone again after 60 years. Sebastian Ketley on Express UK reports from USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory data. It was rumbling and more than 3,000 earthquakes and aftershocks took place nearly 60 years after a deadly 7.2 magnitude tremor struck the supervolcano. And geologists have uh, shockingly revealed this in their Menlo Park, California lecture. Yellowstone supervolcano, the site of a cataclysmic incident that took place August 17, 1959, known today as the Hebgen Lake earthquake. The Yellowstone earthquake, which peaked at magnitude 7.2 and caused the National Park to drop as much as 20 feet in places immediately. That's six meters. The earthquake only lasted about 30 seconds, but that was a long time, obviously. 30 seconds is a long time. But the powerful tremors caused waters as far as Hawaii in the Pacific to rise up in the wells. Now, how does Hawaii connect with Yellowstone? We've seen this in uh, past couple of, uh, about a month ago, I remember, our dear friend from Seattle, who posts the, the analysis of earthquakes in Yellowstone and other areas, noticed that when we had an earthquake of about, what was it? I don't know, it was about three, four out of magnitude in Hawaii recently. We had about the same time an earthquake of sizable size in Yellowstone. And he made that comment at that time. He said, what does Hawaii have to do with Yellowstone? And then he said, well, we're talking about volcanoes and we're talking about magmas and who knows maybe they do have some kind of a connection now how is it possible that after that earthquake in 1959 the magnitude 7.2 that lasted 30 seconds caused the waters in hawaii to rise up in the wells as a result of the disaster the large landslide swept over madison river and created Quake Lake in Montana, USA. That was a new uh, earth change. It created the Quake Lake because it dropped so much. And it, uh, obviously the groundwater came and filled it up. Now, 60, nearly 60 years after the earthquake devastated the Yellowstone volcano, geologists are still recording aftershocks in that whole Yellowstone area. According to the University of Utah, a swarm of more than 3,000 aftershocks struck Yellowstone between, recently, June 2017 and March 2018. The earthquakes were recorded in the Maple Creek area in northwest Yellowstone and can, quote, at least partially, unquote, be traced back to the 1959 earthquake. The incredible discovery was published in a study in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. Keith Copper, director of the University of Utah Seismograph Station, says, we know that University of Utah is responsible for monitoring and recording the earthquakes in Yellowstone. So he, he uh, Keith Copper, uh, the seismograph station's director says these kinds of earthquakes in Yellowstone are very common. He goes on to explain these swarms happen very frequently. Frequently, This one was a little bit longer and had more events than normal, he said. A portion of the 3000 Maple Creek earthquake fell along the same fault line as the Hebgen Lake Cataclysm. Fault lines are fractures in the Earth's surface and are typically hotbeds of seismic activity. According to the U.S. National Park Service, there is an enormous number of faults associated with the volcano, of course we know that, which results in 1,000 to 2,000 Yellowstone earthquakes each year. I would say last year we had about 2,500. 
uh, that were reported, but you know, there, there's a lot more that are recorded. Now, thankfully, Dr. Copper and study co-author Guning Pang did not find any evidence of the earthquakes being triggered by magma moving beneath the ground. Mr. Pang, a PhD student and seismologist at Utah, says, we don't think it will increase the risk of an eruption. These two geologists argued it's not unusual for an earthquake as powerful as the one in Yellowstone to produce aftershocks for decades after the incident. Decades. In 2017, for example, Mr. Pang studied the aftershocks of an earthquake which erupted at Bora Peak in central Idaho back in 1983. Dr. Copper said these are formulas to predict how many aftershocks you should see. For Hebden Lake, Hebgen Lake, there looked like a, a, a deficit in the number of aftershocks, and now we've had these. It uh, has evening, uh, even things out back up to the original expectations. And we also have uh, alerts that Yellowstone volcano is overdue for eruptions, and these fears were addressed in a critical USGS volcano update. Sebastian Kettley, Express UK. Yellowstone Volcano's supposed overdue status was addressed by the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS, in a critical update regarding future Yellowstone activity. A super eruption of Yellowstone Volcano system threatens to alter global weather patterns and blanket the United States in ash. Thankfully, the potential, the odds of the chances of Yellowstone erupting in the near future are next to non-existent. Yellowstone volcano is estimated to have last erupted about 631,000 years ago, a super blast which shaped the volcano's present day caldera. The caldera is uh, right under the, the uh, Yellowstone Lake, of course. And the likelihood of this happening again within our lifetimes is exceedingly low. This is according to USGS. However, there are many people who are so convinced Yellowstone Volcano is bubbling away and preparing to erupt. Twitter user John Fairchilds at Fairchilds CMS tweeted, do any environmentalists actually take into account all of the effects on global temperatures of volcanoes, both above ground and under sea? Doubt it, or they'd be worried a lot more about the long overdue for eruption supervolcano at Yellowstone, the so-called man-made global warming. Andrew Hinton at IAM Hinton tweeted, Yellowstone is actually the one that is most overdue, he said. When it goes off, it's taking the entire West Coast with it, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Have a great day, end quote. There is, however, no cause for concern, according to the USGS, and all fears of Yellowstone erupting soon are unfounded. In a weekly Yellowstone update, the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, USGS geologist Michael Pollan addressed the eruption fears directly. He said, you heard many statements that Yellowstone is overdue, that it has a major eruption every 600,000 years on average. And since the last eruption was 631,000 years ago, well, you can see where this is all going. Is this true? In a word, no. In two words, no way. In three, not even close. Yellowstone doesn't work that way. Yellowstone's last three major eruptions occurred estimated 630,000 years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 2.1 million years ago. He's talking about the major super eruptions. There have been, there's one that was less uh, major, that was 70,000 years ago. And according to Lowenstein, there has been 80 eruptions since 70,000 years ago. And on average, they take place every 6,000 years, and he claims that we're uh, 10,000 years overdue. Now, Poland, going according to Poland, this supposed periodic periodicity has led some to believe Yellowstone erupts on a tight schedule and the fourth blast is coming. He's talking about a super eruption. Dr. Poland argues volcanoes do not behave in this manner, and as a result, there are no indicators Yellowstone is bound to erupt again, he says. He explained, this comes out to an average about 725,000 years between eruptions, and that being the case, we still have another 100,000 years to go. Okay, he's talking about major eruptions, whereas Lowenstein was talking about 
no, uh, Poland was talking about super eruptions. Uh, Lowenstein was referring to a big eruption, uh, a massive eruption that's not as big as a super eruption. So uh, volcanoes do not collect molten rock at a constant and regular rate, as some might expect, Dr. Poland said. This does not happen on a schedule. Instead, volcanoes erupt where their supply of magma and lava built in pressure to the point where the molten rock is forced to the surface. Dr. Poland said, no matter how you slice it, Yellowstone is not overdue, no way, not even close, but we can't say the same about the oil change of your car, so you might want to check on that, he says. The question of Yellowstone's supposed overdue status was also addressed by geologist uh, Jake Lowenstern of USGS. Dr. Lowenstern dismissed Lowenstern or Lowenstein, uh, I think they changed his name here, dismissed all Yellowstone fears saying the supervolcano is far from erupting anytime soon. Um, he said when you see people claiming it's overdue, usually the numbers they come up with say that the last eruption was 640,000 years ago. But that it erupts every 600,000 years and therefore it is 40,000 years overdue. But in fact, if you average out the eruption intervals, there's 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and there was another 640,000 years ago. Okay, where he says that uh, it wouldn't be due for another 70,000 years. He's talking again here comparing the super eruptions. They say the most likely type of blast to go off in Yellowstone in the near future is a scorching hydrothermal eruption. And they're talking about geysers. According to the USGS, such a blast will hurdle hot steam, jets of water, and rocks from the ground. USGS said, though the worst case scenario for giant Yellowstone eruption is indeed bad, it could have global implications. Most past eruptions at Yellowstone were not highly explosive. Of the past 50 or so eruptions, almost all were simple lava flows. What will happen when Yellowstone erupts again? If the next Yellowstone blast happens to be a major caldera forming super eruption, the potential for destruction is, of course, global. According to USGS, the supervolcano has the power to alter weather patterns around the planet. The agency said if another catastrophic caldera forming Yellowstone eruption were to occur, it would likely uh, alter global weather patterns and have enormous effects on human activity, especially agriculture production for many years. Uh, in fact, they said the relatively small 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatumbo in the Philippines was shown to have temporary yet measurable change uh, global temp in uh, global temperatures. Scientists, though, at this time do not have the predictive ability to determine specific consequences of duration of possible global impacts from such large eruptions. And I'm just going to conclude with my uh, astonishment that, again, we found that Hawaii and Yellowstone, for some odd reason, are connected, as USGS told us. The 1959 7.2 magnitude earthquake that lasted for th only 30 seconds raised the water levels in the wells in Hawaii. How is that possible? Well, we know that, uh, I, we don't know if it's really, they're really connected, but we saw that with a, as we said, with an earthquake that took place in Hawaii last month. It is also, we have the uh, phenomena of the world, the world ring like a bell when a huge earthquake takes place, when a sizable earthquake takes place over a 7 Richter, for example. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.